Welcome to Good News from El Paso. We thank God for your presence again here today with us. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you are really watching this program. And we believe that by God's grace, you are gaining from this program. And we all are being helped by what we are doing here. May God bless you as you keep, to, as you keep watching. And invite people to really listen. Because what we're trying to share with you here is something that is going to help each and every one of us. Welcome and God bless you. Honey, please, can you welcome our wonderful audience today? Yes, indeed. Welcome, 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 welcome. We're excited to have you. And guess what? No matter what is going on around you, Jesus Christ is still Lord. And remember, we love you. So stay watching and enjoy this program. This is loaded program today. You will enjoy it. Wonderful. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you because you are our life. You are our source of existence. You are our wisdom. You are our righteousness. You are protector and provider. We honor you. We worship you. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is revealing the truth to us and guiding us in all truths. Adonai, to you be the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As usual, please remember you watch the program. And now at the end of the program, please, you can call us. And whatever you want to discuss with us, we can discuss. You want us to pray with you, we can pray with you. But please, watch the program because the idea is for you to listen to what we are saying. All right? God bless you. Our topic today is this. Peace in the midst of storm. Do we really have storm? Yes, we do. And the Bible says, peace in the midst of storm. Honey, please, we, need, we have two scriptures we really need to touch this morning to start with. Can you read for us from the book of John chapter 16, verse 33? And then after that, you read John 14, 27. John 16, 33, please. John 16, 33, first. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us also see that uh, John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Very good. Hallelujah. Very good. So we see Hallelujah. the storms we have in life. So what are the storms? We are facing in the world today. I think one of the storms that we can see now, everybody talks about the whole world, is this COVID-19. That's the storm we are facing. It's a tribulation. Tribulation does not only mean when people come against you or come against a particular uh, religion or come against a particular set of people. This problem is a tribulation, is a storm. And God is telling us that we should have peace that he has given us his peace, his peace he has left with us. So as we go through this program today, we'll, access, we'll find out how do we access this peace? How do we receive this peace and how do we give this peace to other people? There are different kinds of peace. COVID-19 is not the only, or tribulations or storms. COVID-19 is not the only one. The storm of sickness still prevails or still rule, is there still a lot in this world today. The storm of poverty, and this leads to worry, anxiety, fear, and even any death. These are all storms in our lives today. These are challenges that we need to overcome. And by God's grace, we overcome all by the word of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. So please let us listen and see what else can we do? What can we do in the face of all these storms and tribulations? Right, honey? <laughs> yes. Well, let's uh, get this one thing straight. Tribulation. Jesus is speaking right here. In him, in Christ, we have peace. In the world, we have tribulation. How right is that? We, we are experiencing it day and night, whether COVID or not. In your household, you have the enemy throwing things, trying to distract you, destroy you, do whatever. In this world today, even as we look into what is going on in the news today, in the world, in our states, you see mayhem all over the place. Tribulation. What is that tribulation? 
is operation. It's called spiritual bent pressing. You know, it's like pressing. Pressing, somebody wants to press you. Something wants to press you down. So crushing you, you know, trying to take your humanness even away from you. Humanity. So it's, it's nothing but satanic work. Anyone that is involved, anyone that, is, that allows himself to be used by the devil is bringing this uh, tribulation, oppression into the world. And shame on them because this is what God said. Jesus himself said it. Yes, offenses may be. Tribulations may be. Whatever mayhem the devil is doing may be. But woe to that person that brings that foolishness. So in our world today, we ask ourselves, violence, who, who loves violence? Who loves war? But the devil and his agents. So they are the ones, you look at earthquakes and all that. Okay, well, but then the ones we can avoid, violence. See, ignorance is the root of uh, all this foolishness, hatred. What is it that causes somebody to hate one another? It is the devil. It is ignorance. If you know you, you, who you are dealing with, if you know that Jesus Christ is here, whether you believe him or not, he is the prince of peace. He loves. He is love. He said, love your neighbors as yourself. How hard it is that? Because you don't love yourself, that's why you, you, involve, you indulge yourself in the work of the devil. You don't know love. You don't love yourself. You don't even love your spouse. You, love, you don't love your children. Actually, you kick the dog when you come back from work. You kick the cats. You don't know love. That's why you go into violence. That's why you go into war. You, you war with your mouth. You speak things that are hateful. Hatred is of the devil. What are those things that hatred can bring in your life? You live short life. You, you can't live long life. Hatred will make you die fast, quick, and die miserably. So why do you want to hate? Hatred brings backwardness. Backwardness, you, you, can't pro, you can't proceed, you can't progress, you can't succeed, period. Because you are not of God. Hatred is of the devil. Hatred will lead you to hellfire. Why do you really want to hate your neighbor? When you are supposed to wake up and say, good morning, neighbor, and everybody will rejoice and be happy and go up. Stop serving the devil. That's the end of this story here. So let us have peace. Be at peace with one another. Jesus said, peace, I live with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. Claim your freedom. Stop oppressing your neighbor. Stop doing things that you, would, you don't want people to do to you. That's the life that God has given us. This storm is because we are involved in it. Stop in engaging yourself in this storm. Stop being the one that will bring this storm because it's not good for you. Wonderful, wonderful. So how should a Christian handle these storms or challenges? As a Christian, I'm speaking now to Christians, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. To those that Jesus said, as we read here, he said, peace I give to you, my peace I live with you. Not as the world gives, but as I have given you. How should Christians handle these storms in life? They should trust in God. You see, in Philippians 4, 7, he says that peace I give to you, my peace I live with you. No, he says, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Philippians 4, 7, he said, I have given you the peace. He said, the peace of God that passes all understanding. That is what you have as a Christian that you have. Now, you have to know how to apply that peace in your own life and apply it into the life of others. Like my wife mentioned here earlier, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. So you cannot love your neighbor unless you love yourself. He said, everything is from within. You bring what is inside you outside. So in order to storm this storm of life, in your own world, love must rule your life. Love must be the pinnacle on which you stand. That is just the way. And I must tell you, the only way. And what you have to know is that it is written. 
these things will have to come to pass. They will happen. Let us not take, we are not supposed to be ignorant. We are children of God. These things are written, they will come to pass. But remember what Jesus said. He said, woe betide the person through whom they will come. So don't be the person through whom these storms will come. Don't be the person through whom these tsunamis will come. Don't be the person through whom the enemy is transmitting his hatred. Don't be that person. Remember, we will account for whatever thing we do on earth. Let peace of God reign in your heart. And as that peace is reigning in your heart, bring that peace in your environment. Bring that peace in your world. Stop the storm. You can do it. In a way, you can do it. You, when you stop it in your own life, and another person stops this in his or her own life, there will be an expansion, an increase of storm being stopped around the world. Right, honey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's one uh, golden rule that I always address. Actually, I enjoy that golden rule. Everybody, because before you pinch somebody, before you try to cut somebody, do it, try doing it on yourself. Pinch yourself and see how it hurts. It's called do unto others as you want them to do to you. This is for whosoever, not just the Christians. The Christians, we walk by faith. And no matter what is going on around us, follow it by love. Because if we start hurting, avenging one another, let God be the avenger. You don't engage in avenging. And you don't allow somebody to trespass. Anyways, trespass in your, in your life to crush your, your, your rights as a human being, to destroy you, to kill you for no good reason. Well, guess what? We just continue to walk in love. But while you're walking in love, tell that person, mm, your, your boundary is right here. You can't touch the anointed of the Lord. Touch not the anointed of the Lord. See, the problem is this. A lot of times we do not remember what the word of God says. If we remember what God says, we will know even when that oppression is coming. We use the word of God. Even if you don't remember them, use the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Let him be the one that will diffuse the enemy's power right there. That will render the enemy powerless in the presence of that storm. See, today we are kind of stressing on the storm. Not storms, you can have different kinds of storms. In the marriages, in the raising of children, in the children, in the house, or in the neighborhood, and whatever is going on in our community, in our country, those are storms. So, but in any case, so what do we do? We just remember to walk in love, walk by faith, and do not allow the devil now, if the devil wants to come and choke you to death, are you going to just be there? Well, I'm a Christian. I'm just, no, you don't. You just tell the devil where to go. Stop right there. Cease from your wicked ways. And then continue to use the name of the Lord. The name of Jesus, do you know, is a strong tower. It's a weapon by itself. It will render whoever that wants to hurt you paralyzed. So use that name and then remember the commandment of love. I keep saying that because whatever we do that is not of love is sin. Whatever we do that is not of faith is sin because faith and love work together. So what we do is stay in the area where God has planted us. And woe to that one that will cause you trouble. Woe to that one that will start mayhem in your neighborhood. Woe to that one that will start any of the devil, serving the devil. What to that one? Because we cannot say, okay, we are Christians, let's just, oh, I see no evil, I hear no evil. No, you do. So you are, that's why you're in the world. You take authority over it. Wonderful, wonderful. So then we will be asking ourselves, can Christians actually stop these things from happening? And if they cannot stop them, oh, what do you do as a Christian? What part do you play? No, the thing is that we cannot stop them. We cannot stop pestilences from coming. Or happening. The Bible says nations will rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. He said, even in the families, the fathers will be against their sons and the mothers against their daughters, mother in laws against their daughters in laws, and etc. These things will happen. 
then like we said, the thing is that you will have to learn to stop the storm in your own life and in your own world. The peace is in you. Okay, the peace is in you. We have to know that we don't have to be ignorant of what the devil is doing. The devil, we, the devil is only using human beings as instruments to accomplish his purpose. Because the devil only has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Let's just go back to the scriptures. Look at Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. He had an army. Now, these people have come, surrounded Jerusalem. They want to destroy Jerusalem. When they were not able to do it, what did they do? They started killing each other. They said God made them. They started killing each other. Because it is in them to kill. It's in them to destroy. So, because they did not see anyone around them to kill, they started killing each other. That is exactly what is happening in the world today. We are in a world where the devil has put it in the mind of people to commit evil and crimes. Now, the example is this. If one group will unite and say, let's kill this group, when they finish killing that group, they'll find another group. And they killing, finish killing those group, then they find another one. People making all these arms and munitions will keep making them and they will have to be used. That is just the way it is. So you will have to learn to keep the peace. Now, what we have to learn in this world is that we depend on things around us. Actually, things around us do not depend on us. We depend on them. If every human being on this earth today dies, the trees, the plants, the insects will have a heck of a day. They'll be growing everywhere. Imagine what will happen if you don't mow your lawn for a month or two months. Grass will grow everywhere. The birds will come everywhere. The insects will be everywhere. They will say, hallelujah, freedom. We are the ones restricting them. But if you kill all those plants, all those animals, everything today, they're all eradicated from the world, no human being will stay. So which means we depend on them. They don't depend on us. And if we get that mentality in our hearts, you have, say you have a product you want to sell. There are people to buy it. A lot of people to buy a product. Now, if you want to kill all those people, you want to destroy all those things, who will buy your products? You see, it's the devil have blinded the mind of the people that it's difficult for them to think, look beyond their nostrils like they say. So don't be part of that ignorant group with hatred. Don't be part, that, part of that ignorant group by letting the storms rage in your world, rage in your environment. Wake up. You may be knowledgeable. Knowledge is good. But if that knowledge is not backed by wisdom, it's a wasted knowledge. So let wisdom rule your life. The Bible tells you, be wise. You see, my people perish because of lack of wisdom. They don't know. So a lot of people letting the storm in their lives have the knowledge, but they lack the wisdom. They cannot think beyond their nostrils or, or their eyesight. So be the one to take charge and let this happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when it comes to hatred, when it comes to hatred, know that there is heaven to go to. Remember, there is heaven and hell. Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Because if you are involved in hatred, remember, because you hate yourself, you hate your spouse, you hate your children, you hate even the little animals around you. Therefore, you try to go ahead and destroy your fellow human beings. You try to destroy the things that God has created for you to enjoy. What type of demon are you self? So the point is this, don't serve the devil, serve the Lord because there is heaven to go to. Because if you're serving the devil, you will eventually end up in hell. A lot of people don't like to mention that, but guess what? That's a deception from the devil. So you don't want to go to hell. I know you don't. So what do you do? Give your life to Jesus Christ because he loves you so much he died for you. Therefore, when you are in him, you will not have the mind, the heart to go and dis to hate somebody, to kick around the dogs and kick your wife or you, maybe you are strong enough to hurt your husband. <laughs> Who knows? Or even your children that God has blessed you with or your neighbor. Therefore, stay away from hate because hate is because you are ignorant of what the Lord said about that business. So let the peace reign in your heart. 
Let peace of God reign in your heart. You go, well, I, don't, I haven't experienced that before. When you are in Christ, actually call Jesus into your heart. Again, give your life to Jesus. Because when you do, you will have instant peace. And then your peace will start growing like that. So that is essentially what we are doing. Jesus said, love like little children, unless you are like the little children. You see, it's like when we walk around the neighborhood, you know, we, we are doing exercise, and then you see these little children, there are little kids that go with their grandma, and they see you, and they, go, they will be talking to you, and their grandma will say, hi. But the kids will engage you in conversation. That's the type of life Jesus wants us to have. Life of freedom. Freedom. America is a land of freedom. If you don't like it, sorry. Stay in your room, lock yourself up, actually. Have a lockdown, self-lockdown. Because we have to have freedom. I just love children. Let us copy the children. Because with that, we know that we can never miss heaven. Hallelujah. So, what should we Christians be doing then in this time of storm? Or in this storm that is here with us and will always be with us? We've, from our speaking here, you see, the only thing that can stop this raging storm is love. That is the only antidote to what we are going through, whether it's sickness, in the family, in our community, in our world, love will heal. So let us love and let us encourage others to know the truth. Let us encourage others to know that these things must be. They are here. We have just been given the ammunition to defend ourselves, to defend our community, to defend our world with them. They are here. As long as the world is in existence and as long as the devil is here in this world, these things will never cease. So learn to live a life of love and let God direct you. Tell, them, tell people about the good news of the kingdom. Tell people about Jesus Christ. He's the only way. He's the truth. If people will only know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if you always nudge their hearts to release their faith in Christ, there will be peace, there will be love, the storms. They will not completely cease, but at least they will be controlled. You see, they are raging right now because people have lost it. But with time, they will be controlled. Yes, and remember, what do Christians do? That is why God says, pray at all times. Pray before the storms come. Pray in the midst of the storm. Pray, pray, and take authority. Take authority over the devil, over his works. Take authority. And if you see wrong, call it wrong. Don't, don't play politically correct. So don't be politically correct in, in, with that. Let's look at what Romans chapter 8, verse 37 said. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen. We are more than conquerors. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, in, no matter what is going on in my, in my life, I am more than conqueror. No matter what sickness or disease you're trying to do, I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, who loved us, he loves us so much. Yesterday, today, and forever, he loves you. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Is somebody trying to put you down, press you down, and take your rights? Tell him, sorry, you can't. Because I know I'm, a, I'm more than conqueror. I am more, tell yourself that. Let that sink into your heart, head, your heart, so that you, when you speak it, then somebody will know for sure this is a person that is more than a conqueror. Stop taking, letting the devil push you around. Letting the, uh, the bullies, the bullies from the devil need it also. Just know this. It's all about lack of love. If you don't love, you hate. Mm. Ooh, that's, that's stupid. You go, well, she's saying stupid. Yes, it, the, the Bible says that in, in, <laughs> in Proverbs. Read what it says over there. It says if you don't heed instruction, you are stupid. So let us not be stupid. People, let us be intelligent, wonderful children of God. Know that we are more than conquerors, no matter the storm. No matter the storm. Lo husbands, love your wife. You will enjoy yourself. Wives, love your husband. Love your children. Let's love the, the world that God has given us. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. You might not love yourself. Too bad. Love your neighbor. <laughs> Period. So how can we do that? Get into Jesus. He's the answer. God so bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Christians, you've heard it. 
and non-Christians, those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Jesus said, he told his apostles, he said, peace I give to you, the, my peace I live with you, not as the world gives it, I have given this to you. So this peace we are talking about here, really, so born again children of God. If you are not a born again child of God, it will be difficult for you to experience this peace. So we encourage you now, I receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, so that this peace is not going to just be around you, it will be inside you, and it will be coming out from you. Because it's the peace that Jesus Christ has given to those who received him. Remember, even before he, 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 Christ, when Christ was born, what did the angels say on his death, the day he was born? He said, peace to the world. To those who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, there is peace in their hearts. So if you are not a born again child of God, we are leading you now to this prayer of repentance. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I mean, can't you, do you want to enjoy peace? Say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I was born a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of sins. Remove the hatred of the enemy from my heart. Remove the enemy completely from my heart. Let my heart be filled with the love of God. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse me from all sins. Father, make me a child of God. Make me a child of heaven. Let your peace rule over me. Let your peace reign in my heart. Receive me, Father. Send me your Holy Spirit to guide me and direct my ways. Thank you, Father. Jesus. I believe I'm now born again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am now a child of God. That's what it takes. You are now a child of God. You are now born again. You can now begin to not just say peace, but enjoy peace. Receive that peace. Glorify God for that peace. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule your heart every time and every moment. God bless you. And we love you. And this is number one. If you have said this prayer, I know something was missed around there. Just know that accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Let him be Lord over your life. Amen. You are now in the kingdom of God, we in love the you. family of God, and start reading your Bible. We love you. Jesus loves you. And we wish you God's love and God's guidance in all things. In Jesus' name, remain blessed. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you and so and we, do we. Do we.